Hey guys, I'm Angela and welcome back to Hobby Night. Back by popular demand, I'm going to be building a scale model today, a Japanese World War II fighter. It blew me away during my live stream Q&A when I had a variety of people asking whether or not I was going to be going back and building some more scale models. I, for one, really enjoyed when I built the Merkava and Tamiya even enjoyed when I built the Merkava. That's why they sent me not only the airbrush you saw me use during my Age of Sigmar troll painting tutorial recently, but they also sent me the Mitsubishi Zero Fighter, as well as another plane that I'll probably be building later on. Now, I'm really excited about this particular fighter because I am a huge fan of Studio Ghibli and Miyazaki has a film about the designer of the Zero and I watched it relatively recently I mean I guess it's been a couple of years but when I watched it I really enjoyed the historical fiction of it and I thought it was really cool just seeing all of the planes so I requested that they send me a Zero fighter if possible they did and that's what I'm gonna be building up for you today so without further ado let's jump to the hobby desk and get building the first thing that I wanted to do before I got started on building this model was reviewing the instructions because what I remember of the Merkava tank, Tamiya's instructions can be a little dense. There's a lot of information that they provide for you on them. Not only do they instruct you on how to actually build the kits, but they actually give you a guide on the paints that you can use to make sure the plane is historically accurate, as well as where to put all of the lovely decals that they give you in their kit as well. Now, I'm not going to be painting up or decaling the model today. We're just gonna be building it. Once I was feeling comfortable with that, it's time to move on and actually start clipping out some of the pieces that I need so we can get building this plane. Now that I'm feeling confident that I've reviewed my instructions well enough, let's go ahead and start clipping out some of these pieces. I'm going to do this in sections, clipping out some areas, collecting them into these little bowls that I have, and then cleaning them up afterwards. This is just going to make, I think, the build a little faster and a bit easier by, while still allowing me to keep everything organized. Now, after I get everything clipped out, because, you know, we've all done that, we've all clipped models off of a sprue, right? I want to talk a little bit about the cleanup process for this particular kit. I decided to do something a little bit different than I normally do. Normally, I'm just using my jeweler's file tools as well as my mold line remover from Games Workshop, which I still use on this kit, but I decided to use the sandpaper flexible sheets that Tommy has sent me instead of my files. And I have to say, they're a massive improvement. My files previously used to leave a little bit of a harsh groove on some of the plastic, especially when they were softer, which you could sometimes see with the paint on it. These other tools that I've been using, the ones that Tommy has sent me, these flexible sheets of sandpaper, can fold and bend and they're really easy to work with and they're a much finer grain. So I'm not giving getting as much abrasive material onto my model. I really like how this cleanup goes and now it's time we can start putting things together. Hey guys, I just wanted to jump in and let you know that I've recently started live streaming. So if you never wanna miss those, or if you've been enjoying the content you're watching today, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications. Now, let's go ahead and jump back to the video. All of the pieces are cleaned up and clipped out, and I feel like we can actually start putting this model together. And we're gonna start with the interiors working our way out as the instructions guide us. The first thing we need to work on is the cockpit and the engine, and I have to say, I'm a little bit bummed <laughs> that these end up getting covered so much by the rest of the plane. Now, I know that's how the plane is built. Obviously, the engine needs to be inside, but because the model itself goes together so well and it's just so beautifully designed, I'm actually very sad that it gets completely covered and you no longer see it. But that is the case and we're just going to have to go with it because I do want this plane to look complete.
Once we have the interiors built, it's time to start working on the exterior of the plane, like the wings and tail and all that kind of thing. And honestly, this is when the model really starts coming together. There's a lot of little fiddly bits that you have to glue down using tweezers and just being very delicate, but the bigger pieces come together super smoothly. And I just love how easy this model is to put together. Even with how sometimes intimidated I am at the beginning when looking at the instructions, it just comes together smoothly. And before I know it, I have a mostly complete model. Now, one of the key elements that I really wanted to focus on while I was building this and treat a little bit more delicately is the clear plastic pieces of the cockpit. Because that window, sometimes I've seen the clear plastic go a little frosty with the glue that I've used. That happened to me on the Merkava tank, and I wanna avoid that as much as possible with this plane, especially since there's a lot larger panels to work with. So I'm just going to glue it down where it connects to the gray plastic rather than trying to glue them at the top where the clear plastic touch each other. The reason for this is one, if I decide I wanna paint this later on, I think I'll be able to pop them off and use the masking materials that Tamiya provides in the kit so that I can paint them and then reapply them very easily. But also, again, I wanted to avoid that frosting problem that I've sometimes seen with this particular plastic glue that Tamiya provided me to use on this model. Once I have that clear plastic portion on, there's just a few wing tips and everything to put on, and then we'll have a completed Zero Fighter, and we can look at the final piece. And here it is, my Zero Fighter. I have to say, I am so pleased with how this turned out. I mean, the fact that it's got moving parts, like the propeller, the wheels actually move as well, which is really cool. And just, it went together so easy. I know I said it during the video and throughout of like, this thing just came together without any hitches, which I frankly was kind of surprised by with how small some of the pieces are on this kit. I was one expecting to have either lost something, which never happened, or to break something, which also never happened. And I don't know if that was just because of the tools I was using, the quality of the Tamiya kits or what, but I am so happy that nothing went wrong with this build and it's encouraged me to want to build a lot more. Now I have another plane that they sent me that I'm also thinking about building. I don't know if it'll be for content or if it'll just end up on my Instagram, but I am going to be building it. And I know of a place where I can get a whole bunch more. And I do think I want to go take a look at what other options there are because now, now that I've built a tank and an airplane, I kind of want to build a ship. I think that would be cool and I kind of want to do something big. Now it might, might take some time. It might be a two part episode or something like that, but I think it would be really, really cool. Before I head out, I do want to give a huge thank you to Tamiya for sending me this kit to actually build up. Without them doing that, I don't know if I would have been encouraged to jump into this a lot more. I also want to thank you guys for encouraging me to continue this kind of content as well. I, the Q&A really did surprise me with how many people were asking about whether or not I was going to get back to scale models. And it really just was cool to see because it is something that I really enjoy that I didn't actually know if I would enjoy when I honestly got into it, but I'm super pleased with it. So the last thing that I need to do before I head out is to thank my patrons for making it so that this video could even happen in the first place. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. And if you want to join them, make sure to find the video or the link in the video description below where you can join my Patreon and get access to my Discord. I'm Van Angela, and I hope you enjoyed this particular hobby build and I hope you have a wonderful hobby night.